Welcome to the Real Estate Game Plan Podcast, where we bring you inspiration, actionable steps, and knowledge to build your game plan to take your real estate business to the next level. My name is Demo. And I'm Derek, and we are licensed real estate brokers and your hosts for this podcast. Let's get started. Hey, Derek, thanks for coming out to my home today and taking a look. Let me know what you think it might be worth. I'm excited. I've already had a couple of agents take a look at it. Um, You know, they've looked at it, given me some information, but I'd love to know why you think I should use you. Me? Ah, I'm frozen. (laughs) Well, most of us know real estate agents. Either Mm -hmm. we have friends that are real estate agents or we have real estate agents in our family. I mean, the reality is, at least here in Georgia where we are, There are thousands, I think 100,000 agents in the state of Georgia, and chances are your seller has got options. And so why should they choose me? Why should they choose you? What is it that's going to set you apart? And so I don't want you to be caught off guard. We don't want you to be caught off guard with that question. This is something you can think about ahead of time. Mm -hmm. What is going to be your unique selling proposition when you're marketing yourself, because it's not just houses, you are selling yourself and your services to the public. Yep. And, and it's probably more important, right, Derek, because they say people work with people they know, like, and trust. Yeah. And so, um, you know, if they have all of those options, like you were saying, and, uh, you know, with, with information being so available for especially buyers out there, right, I can go look up right now on about 10 different apps, every piece of information about that property, uh, maybe minus some MLS, and you know, notes here and there, uh, then why do I need an agent who is this agent or that agent or who specializes in this if I can see all the info? So you really have to dial that in. Yes, because so so much is automated because of technology, which we love because it makes our lives so much easier. But it's that human connection, that personal touch that you are going to bring to the table that's going to make the difference. Yeah. So let's give some examples, right? Um, you're a new agent. You've just started in real estate. Um, maybe you graduated uh, high school, college. Uh, maybe you've worked for a year or two. Maybe you've interned somewhere, but you've never sold a real estate property. Maybe you've never even seen or been in a transaction or been even close to one, right? But you're in real estate. You've gone through school. You've gotten your license um, for your your uh, for your real estate license, and now you're ready. And now you come across that first person, that family member or referral or friend or whatever, who says, "Oh, great, you got your real estate license. Great. Why should I use you?" And maybe they're going to ask it a different way, right? Sure. We're just get cutting to the chase here. Uh, but you know, why why should I use you as an agent? And and we were chatting about this as a new agent. You've got a lot of different different options, and, and one of which... You do. I mean, and you do have personal traits, such as you're a hard worker, or maybe there's hobbies and accomplishments that you've had through school. Certainly keep those, but don't be afraid to piggyback on the company that you work for, though, because mm-hmm. I know our agents here at Solid Source, you know, mm-hmm. we close five, 6,000 deals a year. You guys have access to a team of brokers, in-house attorneys, etc. So don't be af- afraid to build on the strength of the company that you work for. Yep. Yep, you definitely have people behind you. Uh, Two point two billion in, in real estate volume, six thousand you know closed transactions. Like you said, brilliant broker team, in house attorneys. I mean, you have support behind you, and so you're not out there on an island, especially uh, here at Solid Source. But like you mentioned, hard work, right? So I'm a hard worker. You're not going to find an agent who's going to work as hard for you as I will. I'm in the office every day, whether it's your home office or your, you know, broker office, right. making uh, calls every day at 7 a.m. or checking the stats or whatever you're doing, you know, make sure it's honest, but, you know, do those things and highlight those things for that person. So this is you as a new agent, no, you know, recorded experience in, in, in real estate as far as closing transactions, but you do have skills. Maybe you're a great negotiator. Maybe you were part of the debate club or a uh, math club or something like that. And you have a great, uh, you know, mind for numbers and, and crunching things like that. You have something, think about those things and write them down because we all think about, Oh, well, I would say this, I would say that. But when the time comes, you don't want to stutter. You don't want to have that moment of, uh, what do I bring? Right. <laughs> you right. want to know it. You want to be confident. And for a lot of us, uh, especially our newer agent, your resume is going to be your social media profile, mm-hmm. right? So if you specifically work in a, uh, most of us do, a zip code or an area, we have a lot of marketing information for our agents. And I'm sure you do too, if you're watching this and you're an agent elsewhere in the country. But um, 
that is going to be so helpful to you. Are, are your posts in line with um, the profession, with real estate? Because a lot of folks are going to look you up for sure. Yeah, that, that actually brings up probably a whole nother uh, podcast we'll have of, <laughs> you know, take some time before or after you get your license and, you know, go back through everything because yes. that's what your sellers, that's what your buyers, that's what your clients are going to do. Like you said, they're going to research you, Google you, do whatever, find as much information about you as possible. Uh, and so you want that to be the image that you want to present um, to the public. So what about an experienced agent? Is it easier? Is it harder for them with a unique selling proposition? I think it could be easier uh, depending on uh, if you've done real estate full-time or part-time to some extent, because you certainly can lean in on that experience that you're not a new agent. But either way, I mean, even if you are an experienced agent, you can get tripped up on the question. Mm -hmm. You know, you really can. You, but it is something you want to you want to think about ahead of time. You want to be confident in your delivery for mm -hmm. it. And if you've been in the business for, let's just say, 15, 20 years, I also think expectations are going to be higher. If you are a seller and you tell me you've been in the business for 20 years, well, how many homes have you sold? Mm -hmm. um, how many have you sold in this area, in my neighborhood? Mm -hmm. So you're going to be expecting to, um, you're going to, you're going to expect the experience to be reflected in, in them. Yeah. So that's a great point. Yeah. And, and, and so when you do say you're experienced and you've been in the business while well, you're right, there may be some follow up to that. And maybe you already have that built in. Hey, I'm an experienced agent. I've been in the business for 15 years. I've sold in this area. I've sold in this County. I've sold in this district, whatever the thing is that you're selling in. And maybe you go ahead and have those key points keyed up before the questions come. Right. And yes. so you attack those questions uh, before you even have it. But, uh, and that can change, right. When you go from that new agent to that five, your agent to that 10 or 15 and you have that experience, your, your USP, your unique selling proposition will change as you grow in your real estate career, right? And even for part-time agents, because, uh, you know, sometimes as a part-time agent, you feel like, well, this isn't for me or how can I use that? Well, if you're a part-time agent, you're probably doing something else. And if you are, what are your skills and benefits that you you do there that you can incorporate into real estate? Uh, maybe you're doing something on the legal side in negotiations. Uh, you know, maybe you're teaching, right? And so teachers are fantastic agents typically yes. because they have a, a very patient demeanor. They're able to explain things very clearly, um, do a lot of things for, uh, for clients. And so um, don't be afraid to use that. Right. And don't be afraid to say um, that you bring those skills in from somewhere else. Yes. I mean, we all have different strengths uh, and, and weaknesses and it's really just capitalizing on those strengths mm -hmm. and making that connection because I do think sometimes it's not so much, uh, how, what we say, but how we say it right. Mm -hmm. And so just focusing on building that connection when we are conveying this information to is something to keep in mind. Yep, definitely. So new or experienced, uh, part-time or full-time, uh, we all bring unique selling propositions to the plate. Just know yours and we'd love to know what yours are. If you'd love to leave us a comment, we'd love to review it and talk about it a little bit more. And uh, we thank you for listening and watching. You've been listening to the Real Estate Game Plan Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube and leave us a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. Thank you for listening.